Joining me now is Jim Warren. He's an assistant professor at the University of Regina and has studied drought extensively and the effects of our climate when we just don't get any rain. You've even written a book about it, Jim. Tell me what the book is about. Well, uh, I'm a co-editor of this book. Uh, the book is a culmination of about uh, 10 years of research by a group of uh, around 25 academics from the Canadian prairies and from Chile and Argentina. And we took an interdisciplinary approach to drought because we don't think you can understand it and deal with it effectively uh, simply by understanding weather or simply by understanding hydrology. We need to know how economies and communities are affected by drought and how people can increase their resilience and cope more effectively with the impacts. Let's talk first then about where we are right now. How bad is the drought situation in southern Saskatchewan at this point? Well, it's very bad. Now, uh, you know, I'm not staying on top of the meteorology and the, the, uh, there's a, a Agriculture Canada has a great website called Drought Watch, which will have the specifics, but from my experience, Regina, south of Regina, southwest of Regina is very dry. Historically, yeah, dry. historically, how does it compare? Historically, so far, it hasn't been it hasn't been on for long. Now, for the producers who are affected, I mean, it could be quite serious, but it's much more localized than some of our more severe widespread droughts. The last one that covered most of the prairies was 2000, 2001. So hopefully, hopefully conditions will return to normal at the end of, of this growing season. And really, uh, based on the climate models, the last time I was playing with them, we should be into a wetter phase right now. But we're we not, so what's about happening? A, but a three decade wet period. Well, you look at the models and you look at the cycles and you look at the patterns and you get averages. The last time we were in this 30 year wet cycle, no, let me see, two cycles ago, <laughs> uh, we had a really dry year in 1961 just surprised everybody and it was bad it was widespread but it was just one year things returned to normal in 62. Are you concerned that this drought could go into a multi-year kind of thing? I don't expect so because we're in the wetter phase of what they call the Pacific Decadal Oscillation but don't hold me to that <laughs> <laughs> we just don't know the future with any real great precision, but when we start talking in decades, we feel like we can be you know, somewhat more accurate when you're looking at a longer time frame. What happens if you do get into a sustained drought period? Well, a sustained widespread drought, the last time we had a two-year drought, I mean, the industry withstood it. Not all production units withstood it as good as others because they all have their own unique financial and economic circumstances. But in general, we came out of it, we still had an agriculture industry. Uh, now, since then, since 2000, 2001, I, I, think, I think it's safe to say a lot of farmers are carrying a lot more operating debt. They're farming more land, and I think it requires more inputs, of course. And, and so things may be a bit more precarious for some producers now if we went into a multi-year drought. Now we do have, uh, we have some good institutional supports like the uh, Canada Saskatchewan Crop Insurance Program. But you know, that, that only works really well for a couple of years and then it starts to become actuarially unsound without high, high premiums and with, after a couple of years of drought, uh, we're really going to need to look at uh, you'd need to look at special government programs to assist people if you wanted to keep them. Are you concerned that the situation could become more dire for our agriculture community? Oh, I think so. I think we can expect longer droughts. You know, maybe not in the next decade or two, but three decades, four decades out, I think we could, we could find ourselves into some fairly severe long-term droughts. Is there something that we should be doing? Because well, it feels <laughs> like we're at the mercy of the weather. But what are you saying? Well, I, th I think right now we've done a lot of good things. We've had over 100 years experience coping with droughts. The worst, longest, of course, being the 30s. We haven't had one that long. But the droughts we've had since then, I think we've done a lot to increase our resilience, like the development of Mintel technology on prairie farms. I mean, that's been an outstanding adaptation that's helped. But it doesn't help you two or three years into a drought. Um, we've done a lot to uh, uh, reduce vulnerability through uh, 
uh, the development of uh, shallow bury pipeline systems for ranchers so that cattle have access to water during a dry year in lots of parts of the province. We have developed some regional pipeline systems to ensure communities uh, uh, more uh, uh, a safer water supply, mm -hmm. sort of drought proof. But there's many com communities don't. Like, right, and for planning, what do we have to do well, going well, forward? We, yeah, right, we need some plan Bs. You know, uh, what could those be? Well, I think you need to look at where you, you would get water in the event that your source is depleted. And, you know, you, even the region of Saskatoon, <coughs> their water essentially, our water essentially comes from, from Buffalo Pound and Lake Diefenbaker, uh, which you'd think, well, Lake Diefenbaker's a, a pretty good supply. Lake Diefenbaker should be able to go a couple of years uh, without a lot of inflow and, and still be okay. But, uh, we know from the historic record that both the North and South Saskatchewan rivers in the late 19th century became too shallow to paddle canoes down them. I mean, the, the fur companies couldn't get their furs out. So... There's a lesson to be learned from our past. Right. And we're pretty good at that. We're pretty good. Uh, but yeah, if we get into another multi-year drought, we're going to have to, I think, and we should start planning. We should start thinking of what we might do, how we might cope. Thanks for your time today, Jim. Okay, well, thank you, Jim.